to another Router Guides video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video, we're going to take Topology Zero with our two routers and two loopbacks, and we're going to make a default route. And we're going to do it two different ways. The first way is going to be the correct way, and we're going to use a next hop of an IP address. And the second way is going to be sort of the incorrect way, and we're going to just use an interface. So let me show you what I mean here. I've got my routers already up. I'm going to just type some text up here so you can see it. As you know, if you've looked at the previous videos for default routes, you know that a default route is IP route, four zeros, four zeros. And then what some people do is they put the next hop IP address. And in our case, it's going to be 10, 10, 12, 2, if we're making the static route on our one side. Another way of doing a static route is IP route, all zeros, all zeros, and then using an outgoing interface of, let's say, fast zero, zero, which would be this interface right here. So let's try the first way, see what happens, look at our ARP table, and then we'll try it the second way and see if anything changes. Let me just click this icon right here to get our interface labels right there. I've got my IP addresses already set up. We'll just do a quick show ARP on R1, and you could see I've got my own IP address and I have the IP address of the other side. I'll just do a quick ping to the other side just to make sure everything's good. That's good. Now we'll do conf t. We'll do IP route 10, whoops, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros. And then the correct way is 10, 10, 12, 2, the IP address of the next hop. Exit out of there. Do a show IP route just to make sure everything's okay. And then I'm going to do something cool, show IP route static, just to show my static routes, and everything is good there. Okay, so let's try, let's do a show ARP again. You can see my information there. I'm going to ping something on the same subnet, 10, 10, 12, 3. Now I don't actually have anything of dot 3, but I'll ping it anyways. And you can see it's trying to send a ping, but it dies. Control shift six to stop that. I'm gonna do a show ARP and you can see here that I do have an entry in my ARP table, except that the hardware address is incomplete, which means I tried to find it, but it bombed out. Okay, so now let's do a ping to some completely non-existent IP address. So 9999, for example. And what's gonna happen here is that the ping is going to hit the next hop because your default route is all zeros, all zeros, next hop of 10, 10, 12, 2. It's going to hit router 2, and then router 2 is going to try to send it for you. So let's try that ping. And you can see we have a U, unreachable. It's dying out. Now I show my ARP table. And you can see here that, pretty interesting, we tried to ping that. We don't have any ARP entry for all nines, and that's because R2 has something called proxy ARP on for us. So all we need to do, or all R1 needs to know, is how to get to the next hop. That's it. So I can ping any IP address I want that's not on that subnet. So I could ping, uh, let's say, 8888. And my ARP table is not going to grow. So all I have is 10, 10, 12, 2. That's all I need to get to any IP address that's not on this subnet right here. All right, so let's get rid of our correct IP route. So no IP route, all zeros, all zeros, and our next hop ID. Exit out, and I'll clear ARP. And now I'm going to do it the incorrect way, which is if I move my window there, IP route all zeros, all zeros, fast zero, zero. So what this does is it doesn't actually chuck it to the next hop IP address. All it does is throw it out this interface. So conf t, IP route all zeros, all zeros, fast zero, zero. Exit out of there. Show ARP. So you can see I've got my next hop IP address there. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ping 9999. 
Now, instead of being a U, you can see now it's a dot right there. Show ARP. And now this is interesting because now you have an actual entry in your ARP table for this IP address. And it's incomplete. So it is ARPing for that IP address. Let's see what happens if I ping 999.10. And just add one to the IP address. Same deal there. I'm going to stop that with Control Shift Six. Hit the up arrow. Let's do dot eleven. Control Shift Six again, and now let's do dot twelve. And Control Shift Six. Now I do a show ARP, and you can see my ARP table is getting quite large now. Well, it's getting larger because it is trying to ARP for every single IP address that's not on the subnet. So in essence, what it's what's happening here is router one believes that everything connected on this link, everything that's not 10, 10, 12 something, so it could be 3333, 4444, anything other than this subnet right here, basically thinks the whole internet is on this side and it's going to ARP for every single one of those IPs now eventually what's going to happen is the memory on your router is going to get exhausted, your CPU is going to slow down, and uh, your router might actually crash. So this is one big reason not to do a default route of IP route, all zeros, all zeros, and just an interface number. You always want to have your IP route command in with an IP address. You could also do IP address and interface which is fine, but the one that you don't want to do is just to have an interface right there. And you can see here very plainly that this is the reason why. As your router tries to reach destinations not on this subnet, it's going to create an ARP entry for every single IP address, and eventually you're going to run out of memory. All right, that was a quick and easy video of doing the IP route the correct way and the incorrect way. Thanks for watching.